January 29, 1863, dawn bright and cold, encased in snow and silence. The Shoshone Indian camp located near the banks of Bear River, near present-day Franklin, Idaho, had little idea what that fateful day held in store for them. In the early dawn hours, screams, gun smoke, and the feverish sounds of a pitch battle pierced the air. Within a few minutes, California militia men had burned the Shoshone's homes, shot their husbands and sons, raped and killed women, and bloodstained the white snow, bringing immense sorrow and grief to the Shoshone's. This catastrophe happened in the Cache Valley, originally called Sihu Bugoy, Shoshone for Willow Valley. It was the traditional hunting ground for the northwestern Shoshone tribe. There they gathered grain and grass seeds, hunted small games such as ground squirrel and woodchuck, and also large game including bison, deer and elk. For this reason, the mountain valley had attracted fur trappers and other immigrants. And that's where all the problems began. The Indians migrated back and forth through this region with the seasons, taking advantage of the best weather and making use of plants and wildlife in their daily lives. When the fur trade was brisk, trappers of European extraction entered the area, seeking beaver and other furs. They learned much from the Native Americans about survival in the area's sometimes harsh conditions, and they gathered annually at rendezvous to sell their furs, buy new supplies, share news and meet old friends. Over the two decades of active fur trade, 16 rendezvous were held, 4 in what is now the Bear River Heritage Area, and the other 12 within 65 to 200 miles. Cache Valley which straddles the Utah-Idaho border and is home to Logan, Utah and Preston, was named Cache Valley for the mountain man practice of caching their pelts there. By 1856, European Americans had established their first permanent settlements and farms in Cache Valley, starting at Wellsville, Utah, and gradually moving northwards. Brigham Young, the second president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, made the policy that Mormon settlers should establish friendly relations with the surrounding American Indian tribes. He encouraged their helping to quote by quote, feed them rather than fight them. Despite the policy, the settlers were consuming significant food resources and taking over areas that pushed the Shoshone increasingly into areas of marginal food production. The local Shoshone Indians complained that the Mormons used so much of the Cache Valley that the once abundant game no longer appeared. The foraging and hunting by settlers traveling on the western migration trails also took additional resources away from the Shoshone. As a result, the natives became impoverished, desperate and starving. The Shoshone attacked farms and cattle ranches for food, not just for revenge, but also survival. No! 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 <laughs> Another attack happened in 1859, when a settler company of about 19 people from Michigan was traveling on the Oregon Trail near Fort Hall. They were attacked at night by people they assumed were local Shoshone. Several members of the company were killed by gunfire. The survivors took refuge along the Portneuf River where they hid among the bulrushes and willow trees. Three days later, Lieutenant Livingston of Fort Walla Walla, leading a company of dragoons, met the survivors. He investigated the incident and documented what he called the brutality of the attack. The detachment of Lieutenant Livingston's dragoons found five bodies at the scene of the massacre that were mangled. A girl of only five years old had her ears cut off, her eyes gouged out, both legs amputated at the knees, and by all appearances was made to walk on her stumps. On September 9, 1860, Elijah Utter was leading migrants on the Oregon Trail when they suddenly were attacked by a group of presumably Bannock and Boise Shoshone. Despite the settlers' attempts to appease the Native Americans, the Indians killed nearly the entire migrant party and drove off their livestock. Alex's Van Ornum, his family and about 10 others hid in some nearby brush only to be discovered and killed. Their bodies were discovered by a company of US soldiers led by Captain Frederick Dent. Lieutenant Marcus Reno came across the mutilated bodies of six of the Van Ornums. The survivors reported that the attacking warriors took four of the migrant children captive. 
As a direct result of this attack, the army established a military fort near the present location of Boise, Idaho, along the Migrant Trail. Colonel George Wright requested $150,000 to establish a military post to sustain five troop companies. Zacchaeus Van Ornum, Alex's brother, heard from a relative on the Oregon Trail that a small white boy was being held by a group of Northwestern Shoshone likely to be in Cache Valley. Van Ornum gathered a small group of friends and traveled to Salt Lake City to get help from the territorial government. There he visited Colonel Connor at Fort Douglas and asked for help to regain what he thought was his nephew. Colonel Connor agreed and sent a detachment of cavalry under the command of Major Edward McGarry to Cache Valley near the town of Providence, Utah. Van Ornum located a small group of Shoshone warriors being led by Chief Bear Hunter. He and McGarry's men followed the Shoshone as they retreated to the nearby Providence Canyon. After the Indians opened fire, McGarry gave the order to commence firing and kill every Indian they could see. A skirmish between the Shoshone and the US Army lasted about two hours after the Shoshone established a defensible position in the canyon. Finally, Chief Bear Hunter signaled surrender by climbing a foothill and waving a flag of truce. Together with about 20 of his people, Chief Bear Hunter was taken prisoner and transported to the soldiers camp near Providence. When asked about the young white boy, Bear Hunter said the boy had been sent away a few days earlier. McGarry instructed Bear Hunter to send his people to bring back the white boy. He then held Bear Hunter and four warriors hostage. By noon the next day, the Shoshone returned with a small boy that fitted the description of Reuben Van Ornum. Zacchaeus Van Ornum claimed the boy was his nephew and took custody, departing to return to Oregon. On December 4, 1862, Connor sent McGarry on another expedition to Cache Valley to recover some stolen livestock from the Shoshone. The Shoshone broke camp, fled in advance of the army troops and cut the ropes of a ferry at the crossing. McGarry got his men across the river but had to leave their horses behind. Eventually, four Shoshone warriors were captured and held for ransom. McGarry ordered that these men would be shot if the stock was not delivered by noon the next day. When the Shoshone chiefs moved their people further north into Cache Valley, a firing squad executed the captives and dumped their bodies into the Bear River. The final catalyst for Connor's expedition was the Shoshone attack on a group of eight miners on the Montana Trail. They came within two miles of the central Shoshone winter encampment north of Franklin. The miners missed a turn and ended up mired and lost on the western side of the Bear River. Unable to cross the deep river, three men swam across the Richmond where they tried to get provisions and a guide from the settlers. Before they returned, the other five men were attacked by Shoshone. When the Richmond people returned with the advance party. They recovered the bodies of the miners and buried them at the Richmond City Cemetery. Due to such reports, Connor was ready to mount an expedition against the Shoshone. He reported to the US War Department before the engagement. I have the honor to report that from information received from various sources of the encampment of a large body of Indians on Bear River, in Utah Territory, 140 miles north of this point, who had settlements in this valley to the Beaverhead Mines, east of the Rocky Mountains, and being satisfied that they were a part of the same band who had been murdering immigrants on the Overland Mill Route for the last 15 years, and the principal actors on the leaders in the horrid massacres of the past summer, I determined, although the season was unfavorable to an expedition in consequence of the cold weather and deep snow, to chastise them if possible. Colonel Connor began moving at about 1 am the next morning for a surprise attack, but an attempt to get a local settler to act as a scout for the immediate area led the actual advance to wait until 3 am. This military action occurred during perhaps the coldest time of the year in Cache Valley. Local settlers commented that it was unseasonably cold even for northern Utah. 
and it may have been as cold as minus 20 Fahrenheit. On the morning of the 29th when the attack began, several soldiers had come down with frostbite and other cold weather problems, so the third volunteers were at only about two-thirds of their strength compared to when they had left Fort Douglas. The Shoshone chiefs were far from ignorant of the potential for conflict with Colonel Connor's soldiers, and some minor preparations were made simultaneously. Most of this involved mainly gathering foodstuffs from surrounding Mormon settlements, in a fashion similar to the incident with the residents of Richmond, Utah. Most of the firearms that the Shoshone had at the time of the attack had been captured in minor skirmishes, traded from fur trappers, white settlers, and other Native American tribal groups, or simply antiques that had been handed down from one generation to another over the years. Their weapons were not as standardized or as well built as the guns issued by the Union Army to the soldiers of the California Volunteers. <laughs> Major McGarry and the 1st Cavalry Units of the 2nd Regiment California Volunteer Cavalry arrived at the massacre scene at 6 a.m. just as dawn broke over the mountains. Due to the weather conditions and deep snow, it took time for Connor to organize his soldiers into a battle line. The artillery never arrived as they got caught in a snowdrift 6 miles from the Shoshone encampment. Chief Sogwich noted the approach of the American soldiers, saying just before the first shots were fired, Look like there is something up on the ridge up there. Look like a cloud. Maybe it's a steam come from a horse. Maybe that's them soldiers they were talking about. Initially, Connor tried a direct frontal offensive against the Shoshone positions, but was soon overwhelmed with gunfire from the Shoshone. The California volunteers suffered most of their direct combat related casualties during this first assault. After temporarily retreating and regrouping, Connor sent McGarry and several other smaller groups into flanking maneuvers to attack the village from the sides and behind. He directed the line of infantry to block any attempt by the Shoshone to flee from the attack. After about two hours, the Shoshone had run out of ammunition. According to some later reports, some Shoshone were seen trying to cast lead ammunition during the middle of the battle and died with the molds in their hands. Bear Hunter was killed and was among those casting bullets. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to click that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about our latest videos.